good morning guys good evening good afternoon wherever you guys are at how is everybody doing on this very beautiful 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 friday Can you believe it it's friday holy cow it's friday how's everybody doing on this beautiful friday uh i really hope and pray everything's going well for you guys that you're you know getting a lot accomplished that you're able to you know do whatever you need to do um, I especially pray that you are safe, you know, that, that you're not experiencing any crazy weather. I know there's a lot of people experiencing some weird stuff, but most of all, I pray that you are experiencing every day what it means to love like Jesus. To, to experience what love and joy is about, you know, love and joy perfected. This passage of scripture I've read countless times. We've all read these things out of, out of the book of John, because John really, you know, not just his gospel, but in his epistles, stresses about the importance of loving each other. I mean, this was a man who, in his 90s, you know, was brought into the church at Ephesus every you know, probably every Sunday morning, brought in on his bed and he gets up, they prop him up and he says, love one another. You know, because that, 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 that was how he was. He was known as one of the sons of thunder, so it's this booming voice. You know, nothing like hearing little children love one another. You know, I mean, uh, that, that would blow my mind hearing that. I, I, I would love, you know, to, to know that. But this passage of scripture in particular is something, mm, coffee, that no matter how many times I read it, it really speaks to me on what it means to, to show love, not just show love, but to love as Jesus loved. You know, I should say love as Jesus loves. And I want to share this with you guys. Because I think it's really important. Turn with me, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of John, chapter 15. We're going to read verses 9 through 17. As I said, you know, this is very powerful. John Blaze, who's this morning's devotional writer, shares something very interesting here in these verses. We're focusing on verses 9 through 17. This is Jesus in the upper room with his disciples, okay? And he says this, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love, or continue in it. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you that you love one another. Now you're probably wondering, what in the world does this mean? What is, what is John trying to say? Love is, uh, out of my notes here, has ever been the motivation for obedience. And obedience, in turn, is a demonstration of love. I, I know that's a really interesting way of putting it. It's the supreme evidence of genuine discipleship. That we love each other. That we show that love. And, but you're probably wondering, Wendy, how in the, how is that possible to do that? How is it possible for us to love one another? 
you know, Wearsby's commentary asked, how is it possible for Jesus to command us to love one another? Can true love be commanded? And Wearsby states further that what we need to keep in mind here, Wearsby goes on to say is that, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here, we need to keep in mind that Christian love is not basically a feeling. It is an act of the will. In other words, it's not emotions. It's not based on mere emotions here. Okay? He says the proof of our love is not in our feelings, okay, but in our actions, even to the extent of laying down our lives for Christ and for one another. And I'm going to go, you know, go into that a little further. What he is talking about here, what Jesus is saying is uh, something that I, I continually have to remind myself. Love is a verb. Love is a verb. And he's giving himself as an example of that love in action. You know, Jesus gave the apostles an example that if he, their Lord and teacher, humbled himself by washing their feet, because that's what took place if you look at it in chapter, you know, if you look at it in chapter 13, If you read, if you read it there, or let, let's put that we're, we're to love each other. But he goes further here. Okay, if people are true disciples, they're going to prove it by the, the fruits that their spiritual union with Jesus produces, as Bridgeway Commentary says. And you, you look at the fruit, fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. Long-suffering, faithfulness, goodness. Here, I'll, I'll read it. Because sometimes I don't always, you know. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Those, those fruits, the, the fruit of the Spirit, is at the top of the list is love. Love, joy, and effective prayer. He wants us to serve him willingly, lovingly, and with understanding. And that's a, a difficult thing to do on our own, but in Christ's strength, we can do it. He says, I'm not calling you servants anymore. You're my friends. I've always, you know, treated you as friends. You know, he says here, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. And he says one of the key things here is that greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. I mean, that's a powerful statement, don't you think? That if your service is based on a real genuine knowledge of God and the true exercise of self-sacrificing love, you can expect that to produce lasting fruit. I want to make sure I word that correctly. Bridgeway Commentary says it this way. If their service or if your service is based on a true knowledge of God and the true exercise of self-sacrificing love, you can expect it to result in lasting fruit. There's something important about that. I don't know how else to describe it. You know, Chuck Smith says, that's the kind of love I have for you. I'm going to lay down my life for you to prove my love. And this is the way I want you to love one another with a self-sacrificing, giving love where you will lay down your life for each other. Now, this doesn't mean you're going to allow yourselves to be killed for each other, but it's a, it's a self-sacrificing type of love. Again, as I'm going to read this out of uh, Wearsby's commentary, that you, you must keep in mind that Christian love is not basically a feeling. It is an act of the will. The proof of our love is not in our feelings, or it's not in our emotions, but in our actions, the things that we do, even to the extent of laying down our lives for Christ and for one another. Jesus laid down his life for both his friends and his, enemy, and, and his enemies. While emotions are certainly involved, real Christian love is an act of the will. It means treating others the way God treats us. It's an act of the will. You know, I remember this uh, phrase in the 90s, love is a verb, and it is. It very much is. 
And, you know, I was reading this devotional about this, this gentleman named Giuseppe Berardelli. He was from Cassino, Italy. And he was somebody that was well known and loved by everybody in that, in that town. He rode around on an old motorbike. He always led with the greeting, peace and good. He worked tirelessly on behalf of the good of other people. During the last years of his life, he had health problems. It worsened when he got, when he, when he contracted COVID-19 and he eventually died in the hospital. A friend who knew him for 20 years said he would have given up his potential spot in the intensive care unit for another younger patient if he could have. This reveals the character of a man who was loved and admired for loving others. You know, when I was reading it here in, in, in this, it says in the last years of his life, he had those health problems that was worsened when he got you know, infected with the coronavirus. The community went and purchased a respirator for him. But when his condition grew grave, he refused that breathing apparatus. He said he chose to give it to a, to a younger patient who needed it. He felt needed it more. And hearing of his refusal was surprised no one, for it was simply in his character for a man who was loved and admired for loving others. And I'm reading this here. You know, a friend who knew him for 20 years said he would have given up his potential spot in the intensive care unit for somebody else if he could have. You know, that's a powerful thing. Loved for loving. You know, that's especially the message that John keeps sounding throughout his gospel. Being loved and loving others are like a chapel bell, as John Blaze describes it, that tolls night and day regardless of weather. That's, that's an interesting thought. And, you know, I, I thought about this question. I'm still thinking about it. This first question from this morning's devotional. And I want to ask this question of you guys. You know, it, love and loved by all. Do you get those mixed up sometimes? Hmm? Love and loved, you know, loved by all and love all. Let's put it that way. Loved by all and love all. Do you get those mixed up sometimes? Just want to ask that. You know, I thought about this first question, as I said before. Loved by all and love all. Uh, first off, what does that mean? You know, and, and I, I think what I was sharing in here kind of has, has a lot to do with it. I, I will admit I mix them up. I, I have mixed them up in the past. And it's because either I'm too afraid or stubborn to love because of things I've been through because of the incorrect, incorrect, often unbiblical way I was taught to love. You know, the Christian's motto is, yes, we are to love each other. But that doesn't mean that we allow ourselves to become somebody's emotional and or physical punching bag. You can love someone and forgive them without letting them back into your life. You know, I struggled with that. You know, I was uh, hearing, I'm hearing from a lot of people that were brought up in the, uh, somebody calls it the fundamental evangelical movement as well as the independent fundamental Baptist movement or the IFB. Some of their experiences and it, it really hurts my heart to hear how they were treated, you know, uh, hearing, especially about James Dobson, you know, I mean, for, and I'm still trying to salvage all of the, you know, trying to find out more about this. Uh, and my heart breaks for people who have been spiritually abused and used within the church by people who claim to love God, 
you know, and I think they are forgetting these, this very thing that Wearsby's trying to say here, that Wearsby's saying in, in this. You can't force somebody to love somebody, and, and you can't force a feeling. It's, it's as this says, it's not a, basically a feeling. It's an act of the will. Love is a verb. The proof of our love, again, it's not in our feelings, but in our actions. To the extent of laying down our lives for Christ and for one another. Now, that doesn't mean we literally allow ourselves to be killed. You know, it's interesting here. John goes on to, to share. John Blaze goes on to share here. Loved for loving. This is the message the Apostle John keeps sounding throughout his gospel. Being loved and loving others are like a chapel bell that tolls night and day regardless of weather. And in John 15, they reach somewhat of a zenith. For John lays bare that it's not being loved by all, but loving all that's the greatest love. To lay down one's life for one's friends. That doesn't mean we're, we're literally allowing ourselves to be killed for somebody. Sa it, it talks about being sacrificing sacrificial love okay it it doesn't mean we sacrifice at the expense of our family it doesn't mean that we sacrifice at the expense of our health and i hope you guys get what i'm saying here wearsby really summed it up very well i think That yes, while emotions are certainly involved, real Christian love is an act of the will. It means treating others the way God treats us. How we want to be treated, but the way God treats us most of all. And God just lavishes his great love on us. You know, 1 John 3.16 says something very interesting. By this we know love because he laid down his life for us and we ought also we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Now that doesn't mean that we're literally, you know, uh, you know, allowing ourselves to be literally killed here. No, it means that that we we're willing to take that time to to help to to show love, to to practice the love that we say that we we have. I, I think that's a big problem for a lot of us sometimes, because again, maybe we're not taught. We're not taught what, what, you know, what it means to really love. You know, it, this calls for faith and a love to, to, to go hand in hand. I think that's a difficult thing for us to do sometimes. It really is. I hate to say it. But the most graphic expression of this is to be willing to lay down our life for each other. But that doesn't mean, you know, we, we literally, like, lay down our lives where we allow ourselves to be killed or put in harm's way. But it's talking about sharing. You know, in Asbury Commentary, it says, Love is the willingness to surrender that which has value for our own life to enrich the life of another. Now, that, does again, doesn't mean we're literally put, you know, putting ourselves in harm's way for somebody. No. It means sharing. It means taking the time to, to reach out to somebody who needs that, that help. Sharing of ourselves, of our talents. Sharing the love of Jesus through our actions, maybe through a cup of coffee, something to eat, through spending time with them. You know, helping them in, in, in some particular capacity that maybe God is calling you to. Maybe you're burdened to help somebody who's homeless or maybe has been through abuse. You know, there's there's a drug addict or a prostitute out there and you're taking time to get to know them and you find the reason why they're doing what they're doing is because they had a very awful home life, a toxic home life, and they escaped it. And this is how they're living and you're there to show, to share the love of Jesus with them, to, sh to let them know they don't have to live this way. 
Real Christian love is truly an act of the will. It means treating others the way God treats us. God loves us immensely. So we should be sharing, expressing that immense love through our actions. You know, we need to not be afraid to show that love to others. You know, verse 13 is, is a verse you, you and I, babe, have heard so many times, especially when it comes to first responders and police officers who pay, you know, and, and even in the military who make that ultimate sacrifice, you know, and that's, that's a really good example of it. But I think there are other examples without literally dying, you know, sharing of ourselves, you know, treating others again the way God treats us, sharing of ourselves. Yes, Jesus made that ultimate sacrifice and dying on the cross for us. That doesn't mean we literally have to die for somebody, but it, it means we take the time to, to reach out to help them. You know, I really love the commercials for Tunnel to Towers and the Wounded Warrior Project. I don't know if any of you have seen them. They're beautiful, beautiful commercials. I think to me, that's one of the, the best examples. That's one of the best examples of John 15, 13. And first John three six first John three sixteen. That's my perspective of it. I, I think that for me with this particular question, I get them mixed up because I'm either too afraid to love, maybe I've got a stubborn nature in it, or I struggle with what I've been taught on what it means to love, you know, and loving others. Like I said, you know. We're, we're, we're taught, sometimes we're taught a very incorrect, unscriptural version of love. And so it took me who knows how long to unlearn it. I'll be honest, I still struggle. I really do. It drives me nuts. Pardon me here. Sorry about that. These stupid telemarketers, I swear, they drive me nuts. You know, we're calling about your car's extended warranty. Or, or now it's, it's, you know, the Medicare stuff and they're all aimed at my poor hubby and, 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 and probably even at me, it drives me up a wall, but I digress. But how many of us have struggled with, you know, that, that phrase loved by all and loved and love all. Do we get them mixed up? Do you get them mixed up? You know, and it, and why or why, you know, if you do, why or why not, you know, or what, why or why not? I get, as I said, I get them mixed up because I'm either too afraid to love or I've, I, I've, I'm, I've got this incorrect definition of love that I'm struggling with. I think we all have that. And I want to ask this question of all of you today before I close. And I pray that this is something you'll think about, not just think about, but ask God to help you with today. Ask God to help you live out today, to not be afraid to live out. What might laying down your life, what might laying down your life for a friend look like today? What might laying down your life for a friend look like, look like today? What might laying down your life for a friend look like today for you? Maybe it's uh, texting or calling somebody and asking how they're doing. Going over to their home with food. Spending time with them, having a cup of coffee with them. Or even inviting them over to your place for coffee. Or maybe it's helping that single woman fix things up around the house. And maybe even helping her with the kids so she can go to a job interview or to a doctor appointment. Maybe it's reaching out to a, a young single mom, a very young single mom who's being cast aside by family members and maybe somebody in your church and the church is treating her like trash. And you've got an opportunity to stand up and be Christ Jesus to that person. You know, I've heard so many stories of, of young single, young women, young teenage girls, Christian girls who 
they get pregnant and the church and even their parents toss them out like trash. Or there's those rare instances where the parents support the girl and she has the child and the church treats the family and her like trash. Shame on you for doing that, church. Shame on you Christians for doing that. I want to challenge you in this area to think about this question. Think about what laying down your life would look like for somebody today. Think about that and ask God to help you do it. Help Ask God to help you love others as he loves you. And live that out today. Live it out today and every day. That's what I want to challenge you with. Because I think that's so very important. It's extremely important. Find out maybe somebody in your church or, or if you know of somebody in your neighborhood that they're struggling in a particular area. Maybe they need help fixing things around the house because they're elderly or they're a single parent and they can't do it themselves. Or they have just overwhelming needs. But maybe you can help them out in one small area that would make their day. Ask God to give you the courage and the strength to do it. To show that love today. Show it today and every day. Be their friend. Let them know that you care about them. Let them know most of all that God cares about them. That God loves them. Show it through your actions. Be willing today and every day to love others as God loves you and watch what happens. That's something I'm praying for myself, guys. Yes, all these human examples of love and sacrifice that, you know, they're, they're inspiring, but they pale in comparison to what God did for us through his son, Jesus, that great love. And you don't want to miss on the challenge that it brings. The challenge and the blessings, I believe. Because Jesus states in verse 12 here, and I want to share this. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. 1 John 3.16 sums it up very well too. By this we know love because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Hmm? That's my challenge to all of you today. Ask God to please show you and help you to love others as God loves you. I pray that you'll do that. Ask God, please help me love others like you do, Lord. Ricky and I have to get going. I'm not sure what Ricky's got planned for today. It's way up in the air, but we want to wish you all a really great Friday. Stay safe and sane out there. And remember, you are truly loved by an almighty God. Please don't ever forget that. Bye for now, guys. See ya.